Hey guys, this is Chad here with the Soccer Mom Off Road channel. And I am up here in beautiful Lassen National Forest, trying to get one good snow camp trip in before it's all gone. I actually haven't been out in a lot of deep snow camping this season for one, it's just been a bad snow year in California. So I just haven't got up and I wanted to get up in this snow before it's all gone. So we're looking for a good spot to make camp for the night, enjoy the snow. It is an absolutely beautiful day, not a cloud in the sky. The sky is incredibly, just this dark, brilliant blue. Um, and oh man, it's gonna be a beautiful night. So. Thanks for coming along. All right, guys. Uh, I've reached a moment of decision. I haven't made the decision yet. You can make the decision. So I've reached a spot where um, the the any old tracks that were out here are buried under fresh snows. And so this is spring snow. The consistency is like a snow cone. And then sometimes underneath, it's just this powdery stuff that doesn't ever, it doesn't clump. And so it's really unique, the, the composition. It's different. Sometimes it's firm, sometimes it's super soft. It is not at all like fresh powder that you can just drive through and it just goes everywhere. And I'm sinking in pretty deep right now. So here's the here's the conundrum. I'm at seven PSI right now. And the reason that I'm not lower is because the first season I had these tires on, I went down to three in the snow and I went everywhere. The next season, I dropped down to three and I started losing beads like crazy. One of my viewers chimed in and said, hey, a lot of times summer can create co corrosion and contamination. Uh, between your tire your your bead and your um your rim uh that's probably why and that makes a lot of sense um and so from that point on i only went down to about seven after that and that seemed to be my threshold where i, I wouldn't lose a bead anymore so i have a choice do i try to see how these tires will do with a lower psi or do i play it safe leave them at seven find some spot in this general area has spot i had a location that i wanted to get to so just kind of thinking about it right now. I want to share with you guys when you're wheeling in snow like this, uh, learning when to quit. Now, I don't mean give up and go home. I'm talking about when to quit going forward. I'm not a give it gas guy when it comes to snow. Well, maybe in like fresh, amazing powder, uh, but in this kind of snow where it's frozen and then melted, frozen and melted, frozen and melted over and over again. And it's got this crusty layer on top and it's just kind of garbage underneath and you'll be cruising and all of a sudden you'll feel yourself sink. And at that moment, that is the point where you quit. Again, quit going forward, no more gas. Your tires act like shovels. And the minute you've broken through, you've lost your flotation, you've broken through a soft spot, and you're in danger of being high centered. And if you keep on the throttle, you're just gonna sink down. And if you let off the minute you sink, you 95% of the time are gonna be able to back up and then hit it again. So gassing it would be pointless. You'll get stuck and then you'll get pulled out or winched out or you'll be digging and max, you know, traction board yourself out or you'll be in the middle, you'll have to walk out if you don't have any of those means. So just telling you when you're wheeling like that and you feel your rig sink, stop, reverse, slowly back up and then hit it again. And you're gonna get out almost every single time. All right, guys, uh, I went ahead and aired down uh, two more pounds to five. I was at seven I was, I, and now I'm at five. Two pounds may not do enough to get me uh, forward where I want to go. But um, the, the, the idea is as much contact patch as I can, as much surface area so that I can achieve as much flotation as possible.
All right, guys, I made the decision to turn around and uh, go find a spot to camp behind me. Um, there should be plenty of places. It's just, uh, you know, too much work for too little payoff. I'm, I'm moving forward just a little bit at a time at this rate. I mean, maybe I could make it into where I want to go, but I'm still a ways away and I would just be burning so much time. I'd rather kind of set up camp a little bit earlier and, and enjoy this place than, uh, than fight my way there and then get there dark exhausted. So we're going to turn around and uh, find a good spot behind us to make camp and, and hang out in this beautiful place. I want to show you guys what we're doing here. How we're pushing snow. That's my diff here that I'm scraping. And uh, we're just we're just digging. So you might say, Chad, you need 35s, you need 37s. I know, I know I do. I'm on 33s, BFG KO2s, and I love 35s. I would love 37s on this, but this is also my daily driver. I live in California and gas is about a thousand dollars a gallon. So, you know, daily driver, family vehicle, adventure, you know, weekend adventure rig, got to find a happy medium. So we're going to stick with this size tire for a while. And then maybe someday I can get the big tires and uh, do a little better with some flotation. But for now, we'll make do with what we've got. All right, guys, got to get some lunch, get some food in me and decide, do I want to camp in this area? I could tuck under some trees here or I don't really want to camp in this. Oh, I could camp in this open space, but if uh, snow snowmobilers come up tomorrow or um, other, you know, off-roaders uh, come up here, I don't want to be like right next to the thoroughfare. So I'm either going to poke along back the way I came and look for a little side road that I can go explore, or I've got some spots further down next to a creek that would probably be really pretty. Um, so I don't know what I'm gonna do. All right, guys, uh, we found some, uh, there's some wood cross on the road here. Passed it on my way in, but now on my way out, or at least not out of the forest, but uh, back the way I came, I'm looking at this and like this, this tree um, had been standing back here straight up, no snow on it. It's dry, it's dead, and it's perfect firewood. So we're gonna cut this up, get it on the roof, strap it down and take it to wherever it is that we end up camping. All right, guys, we are right around the corner from where I'd like to try to camp, right on the creek. But this is an example of snow wheeling 
in this season where we're, we're heading into spring, the snow is real soft. So I was cruising and all of a sudden just dropped. There was no spinning of the tires. It went here and stuck immediately. So that's why I said earlier, 95% of the time you can back up. This is an example of a 5% where I wasn't trying to push it, just driving and then just sunk, done. So we're gonna do a couple things. We're gonna lift the air springs and then we're gonna put some traction boards here. Secret to traction boards is actually getting them under the tire. You can't just put them at the tire or close. You gotta, you gotta dig down a little bit beneath the tire and get them under the tire or there's really, they won't work. See if we can kick them a little deeper under the tires. Okay, we're stuck, so now we dig. All right, guys, I am tired of digging. So I don't have a winch. Well, I have a hand winch. I have a come along. So we're gonna strap that on and see if we can get this thing off of whatever block that it's on and get ourselves out of here. All right, before we try the hand winch, I'm just short of reaching what I want to reach. I'm gonna try actually using the, the uh, traction boards under the back tires. Let's we'll see what happens. I'm just gonna pray here. Oh, just for wisdom.
That's a mess. You can always dig yourself out. Well, I don't know about always, but most of the time you could dig yourself out. I'm gonna get everything put back away and I'm still gonna try to move forward. Campsite's right around the corner. We'll see. All right, guys, we are here at camp, and we are, I'm so excited to be here. It has been a lot of work to get to this spot, but it's so beautiful. This creek is gorgeous, and this spot is just perfect. We're close to the road, but we're tucked back away. Nobody's coming in here, uh, except maybe snowmobilers, and uh, so, I think we're gonna be set for a really great afternoon and night here at camp. All right guys, we've got our basic layout of camp set up. I kind of created a, a, a fire reflecting wall. Even though I'm not doing the traditional campfire, I'm using the burn barrel. Uh, I just like <laughs> I like the reflecting wall. The reason that I didn't set up closer to the creek is for a really practical reason, and that's because it's so much harder to talk to the camera next to a creek. Um, you find yourself yelling. The noise is just too much. All right, let's get this wood off the rig, and we're going to take it over here and process it, cut it, chop it, and we're going to get that fire started sooner than later.
Well guys, we've got a nice ripping fire going. Firewood is processed. Camp is totally set up. The only thing I haven't done is rolled out my bedroll. And uh, after dinner, I'll go ahead and do that. So tonight is a very simple dinner. Chili. Chili with a little bit of cheese and some chips. That's it. That's that's dinner tonight. Uh, no, no fancy meals. No mystery food. Just good old chili. Easy. And I'm really thankful that I made that choice because... After all the work getting here and digging myself out and then processing the firewood and all of that, I'm tired. And I'm looking forward to just sitting and relaxing. So we'll get some dinner started and uh, kick back by the fire for the rest of the night. That sounds like a great night. Well, while dinner's heating up, I just wanted to uh, share a few things with you guys. This is uh, Soccer Mom Off-Road one year anniversary this March. Uh, one year ago this month, I posted my first YouTube video. And it's it's been a great year. Posted a lot of videos, been on a lot of amazing trips. 379 subscribers strong. Yeah. And so to all of you who gave my channel a chance. I know half, you know, probably half of you know me and, and felt guilted into subscribing. So thank you for subscribing. But for those of you who don't know me and stumbled across my channel and decided to give it a chance, I, I really just want to say thank you. You know, it, it's hard to get a channel started. And especially, you know, in this, there's just some amazing top quality content creators making amazing camping overlanding backcountry videos and so to try to sneak into this niche of on the on the youtube platform you know it, you, you have to earn your way you can't just show up with a video and hope that you know a thousand people are going to watch it you you got to kind of crawl your way up we've improved a lot uh, since video number one and and again just want to thank you guys for coming along for the ride and, and giving the channel a chance and a lot more adventures to come. And so, again, uh, Soccer Mom Off-Road team, thanks for sticking around. Well, guys, I'm I'm getting cold, and uh, bed set up, diesel heaters all set up and ready to go. But we got some more fire time to have, and uh, but it's getting cold. And the thing about fires, as you well know, is that your front is great, but your back gets really cold, and. Uh, that's why I'm really thankful to have this heated jacket. This is the Aurora Five Zone Dual Control Men's Heated Jacket. And um, what's great about it is that there's a back heating uh, section, a zone. And as I'm sitting there against the fire, my hands are warm, the front of my legs are warm. But as I sit against that chair, it presses those heating coils right into my back. And I'm like, oh, so my front is warm and my back is warm. I did a review on this jacket uh, just recently. It's on the channel. You can check it out. I'll put a link in the description. Check it out if you're interested. 
We're headed obviously into spring, so people aren't really thinking about heated clothing, but I'm up here and it's cold and I'm thinking, well, I got this jacket. All right, I wanted to talk about what happened on the trail today <clears throat> uh, with me getting stuck. And I know that some of you immediately were like, oh, I know what happened. You didn't have a winch. That's what happened. And that's true. I, I don't have a winch. And I'd love a winch. Uh, that would be amazing. They cost money. I don't want to let that stop me from getting out, though, and exploring even in the snow. And then some people m might say, well, well, you should have had a buddy. Well, it is definitely easier and safer if you have a friend there. But I, I, there, there was not a buddy available to come up with me on this trip. And so I took the risk to come up alone. <clears throat> and I was doing fine until that moment. So what actually happened? Why did I get stuck like that? Uh, well, like I said on the trail, I hit a soft spot and I sunk. There's really nothing that I could have done except in the end, what I, what I found out was that my third member and right in front of my third member had, had sat right on that soft, icy snow and compacted it. And I don't know if you guys saw, but when I dug out, there were two times when I, I dug underneath, I got in and I started driving and it sunk down more and it sunk down more. Well, what happened was it compressed that snow, which was already wet and icy, and the underside of my vehicle's hot. It compressed that snow and compressed and compressed it until it basically became ice, like hard ice. And as I was digging out, it was, you know, I was digging out, it was fine, and then I hit that section. And the shovel barely went into it. That's how hard it was. It was compacted like ice blocks. That is an amazing fire, and it's burning my kneecaps. And so, basically, I was, I was kind of frozen uh, in place. If I had immediately identified that spot um, from the beginning and, and dug under that place, then I might have not spent so long there trying to dig myself out. So, uh, all is well that ends well. I got out. It cost me about an hour, but I still had daylight when I got here, and it... It wasn't the end of the journey. Just to let you know, I'm about an hour, about an, I mean, if this was dirt, I'm about an hour, hour and 15 from my house. I could have uh, gotten cell reception and called a buddy, Rick, he's been on the channel, and I could have sat in my rig and with the heater on. I have a diesel heater. I've got a heated jacket. I, I wouldn't have been, I could have just sat there in the trail. If I needed to, I could have sat there, called out and sat and snacked in my rig and listened to a podcast and just relax until a buddy came to extract me. So just so that you know, I didn't put myself in danger so that I'd be stranded out here and freeze to death. That, that was not a situation that was gonna happen. So that's what happened. You never know. You always take a risk when you head up in the backcountry, especially when you're by yourself. That's part of the adventure, right? It's part of the adventure. That's why we come out here uh, because we want to come to the unrefined places of life and ask the question, do I have what it takes to make it, to get myself there and to get myself home? So far, I have what it takes. Yeah. This fire has what it takes. It's, it's scalding my legs. All right, guys. Well, I am tucked in to the GX here. It's all toasty. The diesel heater has uh, made it all nice and comfy in here. And uh, let's see. It is not very cold. Not very cold. 34 degrees outside. So not even freezing. But that's cold enough that I, I don't want to be 
I don't want to be chilly. And uh, instead of sleeping bags, I just brought blankets and I hate sleeping bags. I just hate that. I have reached the age in my life where I don't sleep well in the sleeping bag. So anyway, trying some other options and got um, nice, um, some nice memory foam underneath me and, uh, and some comforters on top. And I think I'm going to be really comfortable tonight. So I'm going to read a little bit and then hit the hay. So we'll see you guys in the morning for coffee in the morning reveal. Well, good morning, guys. It is around seven. That's eight o'clock. Time to get up, get some coffee, pack, and get out of here. So let's get to it. One of the features I really love about this Aurora heated jacket are the heated pockets. My hands get cold so easy, they'll turn white and then I start obviously not being able to feel them. So I can stick my hands in my pockets and um, put my hands right on the little heating elements. <sighs> it's so nice. It's like my Achilles heel, my, my fingers, my hands and my toes. I don't have heated socks, but so being able to slip these in my, my pockets and just get them back to operating temperature, oh, it's a lifesaver. So the worst thing about these amazing double walled insulated cups is the warmth doesn't transfer to your hands. What a waste. All right, we're all packed up.
All right, guys, we're done airing up. That took about 20 minutes to go from 10 to 40 PSI, 30, 30 pounds in each tire. 20 minutes, that's not bad. I just factor in 20 minutes at the end of every trip. I know that I'm going to always air up because I always air down. As soon as I hit dirt, even if it's just four service road, I always drop from 35 to 25. It's easier on my suspension, easier on the gear inside the vehicle, and it's easier on me. It just smooths out the ride. So I know that I just factor in 20 minutes at the end of every trip to air up. That's what I do. So we're gonna get this all buttoned up and get on the trail. All right, guys, that's a wrap. It's been a great, eventful, uh, quick micro trip. I really wanna thank you guys for coming along. It's been great if you stuck around this long. It's been great to have you. And uh, we'll see you again on the trail. Until next time, adventure on.